Welcome to the Hand in Hand with God YouTube channel, where the sermons are filled with the Word of God, so you can apply God's truth to your life as you glean them from the teachings that are brought to you by myself, Pastor Daryl Clausen, but more importantly, they're brought to you by the Holy Spirit. Apply God's truth to your life so that He can mold you and shape you into who He wants you to be so that you can shine bright for Him through your words and actions. God bless you as you watch the video. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Hand in Hand with God, a flowing fountain lifestyle, a time where we gather together in a corporate setting and we delve into the Word of God with open hearts allowing God's Word to mold us and shape us into who God wants us to be. In doing so, we allow ourselves to be transformed because we allow the Word of God to renew our minds. Because our hearts are open to receive the truths contained within the Word of God, the Word of God renews our minds. Therefore, we are transformed and we are then able to know what God's good, perfect, and pleasing will is. Let's open with a word of prayer, and then we'll delve into the Word of God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your hand upon our lives and how you've kept us safe. Thank you, Father God, for going before us and keeping our paths straight, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for leading us down paths of righteousness. For your name's sake, Father God. Lord, as we have come together to learn more about you, we dedicate this time to you. Father God, we open up our hearts to receive from your word the truth that is in your word, Father. And I ask, Lord, that each of us works with the Holy Spirit to apply this truth to our lives, therefore transforming us so that we are able to know what your good, perfect, and pleasing will is, Father God. Lord, as I give your message, I pray that I say what you want me to say, Father God. Thanks again, Lord, for having your hand upon our lives and for everything that you've done for us, in us, and through us, Father God. To your name be all glory, honor, power, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. My name is Daryl Clausen, and I'll be sharing the Word of God with you today. Today's sermon is entitled, A Healthy, Intimate Relationship with God. The first people to have a relationship with God, which could be described as a hand-in-hand -hand with God relationship, are Adam and Eve. Although Adam and Eve were the first people to have such a relationship with God, they definitely were not the last. The Bible has kept a record of many people who have had a hand-in-hand -hand with God relationship. Some examples. Hebrews 11, verses 4 to 38. In Hebrews 11, we find a partial list of people who throughout the ages have had a hand-in-hand -hand relationship with God. Let's read Hebrews 11, verses 4 to 38. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not yet seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Verses 8 and 9. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, 
not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Verse 14, For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph, and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel, and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith Moses, when he was come two years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians assaying to do were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab perished, not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. Verses 37 and 38. They were stoned, 
They were sawed asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Let's look at the biblical list of people who walked hand in hand with God throughout their lives. We have Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Sarah, Isaac, Joseph, Moses, Rahab, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and many more. These are just the ones that are listed by name. When you are in a hand in hand relationship with God, it's not always easy, but you know that because God is on your side, you will end up on top. The story of Jacob is one example of this. As we read Hebrews 11 verses 4 to 38, we noticed that the people listed there did not have lives that would be classified as a cakewalk, but they knew that God was on their side. Therefore, they were equipped to believe that something better was on its way. The people listed in Hebrews 11, which is also known as the faith chapter, had eternity and the promises of God on their minds. Hebrews 11 verses 7 to 10 and verse 16 gives us the examples of both Noah's and Abraham's hand-in-hand -hand relationship with God. When you take Adam's relationship with God into account, Genesis 1 verses 26 and 27, Genesis 2 verses 15 to 17, Genesis 3 verses 6 to 7, and verse 8, gives us a good image of what a hand-in-hand -hand with God relationship looks like. Noah, Abraham, and Adam. Noah, Hebrews 11. Verse 7. Let's look at the life of Noah with points taken from Hebrews 11 verse 7. Noah was told by God to build an ark because God was going to wipe out the rest of mankind because of their sin. Noah obeyed God and built the ark and God was true to his word and flooded the earth killing everybody who was not in the ark. Due to Noah's obedience God gave the human race a second chance to start over and repopulate the earth. Abraham, Hebrews 11 verses 8 to 10, supported by Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3. Let's look at Hebrews 11 verses 8 to 10, which explains what happened in Abraham's life because he lived a life holding God's hand. God told Abraham, about some land that he had in mind for his descendants. God also told Abraham that through his offspring the Savior of the world would come. Abraham believed what God had told him and over the years God was faithful to his word and his promises came to pass. Let's look at Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3 because it confirms Hebrews 11 verses 8 to 10. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from my kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. This is the account of the promise that God made to Abraham, including what God was going to do in his life. But first, Abram had to move to be where God wanted him to be. When we live our lives holding the hand of God, He is going to tell us things to do, and we must be sure to obey Him. God will also tell us some of the things that He wants to do in our lives. And even though they may not happen in our lifetime, it is still our responsibility 
to believe that God will bring His Word to pass. Adam, Genesis 1, verses 26 to 27, 2, verses 15 to 17, 3, verses 6 to 7, and 3, verse 8. Adam was the first human to have had a hand-in-hand -hand relationship with God. Just like Noah and Abraham, God gave Adam a responsibility. Noah had to build an ark, and Abraham had to believe that God had land for his descendants. It was Adam's responsibility to take care of the Garden of Eden, and not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For an all-round view of Adam's relationship with God, we must look at Genesis 1, verses 26 to 27, 2, verses 15 to 17, 3, verses 6 to 7, and verse 8, to see what his, and quite possibly our, hand-in-hand -hand relationship with God looks like. Before God created Adam, he had a desire of what Adam's life would look like. We see this in Genesis 1, verses 26 to 27. Genesis 1, verses 26 to 27 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. God created Adam with the intention that Adam and his descendants would have dominion over what else God had created. To the degree that Noah's and Abraham's actions of obedience were beneficial to humanity, Adam's and Eve's disobedience had devastating consequences to mankind's relationship with God. However, God did make it right in sending Jesus Christ to earth so that our sins could be forgiven. We can have eternal life and a healthy relationship with God once again. Genesis 2 verses 15 to 17 and 3 verses 6 to 7 tells us the story of God telling Adam and Eve what he wants them to do, and then how well Adam and Eve obeyed God's request. Genesis 2, verses 15 to 17. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Genesis 3, verses 6 to 7. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired and to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. Just like Noah's and Abraham's actions of obedience were beneficial, Adam's and Eve's disobedience had devastating consequences to mankind's relationship with God. God's plan to overcome the consequences of Adam's and Eve's sin was to come to earth as Jesus Christ so that our sins could be forgiven, we could have eternal life, and once again have a healthy relationship with God. When we are living our life holding God's hand, God is going to communicate with us and tell us what He wants us to do. Take seriously what God wants you to do and do it with your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. When you disobey God, pay attention to the rebuke from the Holy Spirit and repent of your sin. Don't pay attention 
to Satan's condemnation, nor his attempt to have you have a pity party over the fact that you sinned against God, because he is doing this to prevent you from getting your life back on track with God and fulfilling the destiny that God has for you. Instead, once again, grab hold of God's hand as quickly as possible by repenting of your disobedience and asking God to forgive you of your sin. Genesis 3 verse 8 describes to us the fact that Adam and Eve had a relationship with God and God still wanted to have a relationship with them. Genesis 3 verse 8 says, And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Adam was given by God responsibility, which he failed at. However devastating it is for us when we sin, we know that God still wants to have a healthy relationship with us. And God demonstrates this in the life of Adam and Eve. God knew full well what Adam and Eve had done, but he still wanted to spend time with them. Genesis 3 continues with the consequences of their sin, which we still experience today. But he also promises to make it possible for humans to once again have a healthy relationship with God. God did this through his Son, Jesus Christ, who died for yours and my sins. Therefore, if you are living in a state of sin, turn to God and repent of your sin so that you can continue your life holding God's hand. After all, this is why Jesus died for your sins, so that you could have a healthy relationship with God, living your life firmly holding God's hand. Your hand-in-hand -hand relationship with God. Hebrews 11 verses 33 to 38. We can take Noah's, Abraham's, and Adam's relationship with God and learn what our relationship with God is to look like. We can trust that God is going to communicate with us. We can expect that God is going to give us something to do. We will know that what God has called us to do will impact the lives of those around us. We also learned that when we disobey God in any way, shape, or form, He is waiting for us to turn to Him with a repentant heart, repenting of our sins so that we can continue our life holding His hand all the while doing what He wants us to do. When we read the passage, Hebrews 11, verses 4 to 38, in verses 33 to 38, we saw that even though we may have a hand-in-hand -hand relationship with God, life is not always peachy or easy. Although these verses do not paint a completely rosy picture of a hand-in-hand -hand relationship with God, the Bible as a whole states that regardless of what we are going through, we can trust God to be by our side. Jesus said, that He will never leave us nor forsake us. As we walk hand in hand with God throughout our lives, God will continue to renew our mind through His Word so that we will be transformed and be able to know what is God's good, perfect, and pleasing will. Your hand in hand relationship with God Hebrews 13 verses 5 to 6 and 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. Hebrews 13 verses 5 and 6 and 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 describe to us the difference that choosing to live our lives holding God's hand will make in your life. Hebrews 13 verses 5 to 6 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have for he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. And verse 6, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. When we have a healthy 
hand in hand with God relationship. Our trust is in God and not in man. We are to be more concerned with what God has asked us to do and entrusted us with than we are concerned about what man can do to us. Yea, because Jesus said that he will never leave us nor forsake us, we do not have to covet what other people have, but we can be content with what God has given to us. When you do not covet and are content, you can boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man can do to me. This is why the people listed in Hebrews chapter 11 have faith and trust in God, regardless of what man was doing to them. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 While Hebrews 13 verses 5 to 6 describes a little bit of how we should live our lives, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 tells us the concept that we need to grasp so that we will be equipped to withstand Satan's temptation. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When you understand that the moment you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you became a new creation, which means that you no longer have to live your life inclined to sin, then you will find it that much easier to withstand Satan's temptation to the point of not giving in to it and living a life obeying God. Our relationship with God, 2 Corinthians 1 verses 3 to 4. It is good to know what type of God we have a hand-in-hand -hand relationship with. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 1 verses 3 to 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Second Corinthians 1 verses 3 to 4 tells about the God whom we have a relationship with. When we know the type of God that we have a relationship with, it is easy to maintain that relationship and deepen our relationship with God without being worried about what man can do to us. Conclusion A hand-in-hand -hand relationship with God The best relationship to have There are numerous relationships that we experience throughout our lifetime whether it be a sibling relationship parent-child relationship employer or employee relationship a co-worker relationship, a spousal relationship, or a neighbor relationship. The most important relationship is our relationship with God. When we walk hand in hand with God, He will communicate with us and us with Him. As we have observed with the biblical examples of people who have had a healthy relationship with God, we have noticed that not only did God commune with them, but he also gave them instructions and trusted them with the task to do. Adam was told to take care of the Garden of Eden. Noah had to build an ark, and Abraham had to leave his home to go to the land God had promised him. As we build our relationship with God, he will give us things to do, and it is our responsibility to do them, regardless of the opposition that we experience because that is an attempt from Satan to derail us from what God has asked us to do. But have no fear, because God Almighty walks with every one of His children. The God whom you have a relationship with as a Christian is a merciful God, and He also is a God who comforts His children, regardless of what they are experiencing. Knowing that God is by our side, and has our best interests at heart, makes it easier and desirable to pursue a healthy relationship with God and making it stronger 
each and every day. Join with me in this corporate prayer. The words will be on the screen. Let's pray. Father God, Almighty King, glory to your holy name. You are holy and just in all your ways. And I worship you, Father God, because you are the creator of the universe, omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. Lord God, I confess that I have sinned against you. And I ask, Father God, that you forgive me of all my sins, because I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son, who died for my sins, and whom you raised from the dead. I also ask that you fill and baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, for the examples in the Bible of people who lived their lives holding your hand. God, after seeing what can happen in someone's life because they chose to live their life holding your hand, I too want to live my life holding your hand throughout life's ups and downs. Father God, I ask you to forgive me for not choosing to continuously hold your hand up to this point in my relationship with you. I ask you to help me hear you correctly and obey what you ask me to do with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Lord God, thank you for your love for me, and I ask that you help me live my life holding your hand, thus living the life that you want me to. I ask this in Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll close with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you desire to have a relationship with each and every one of us. I pray, Lord God, that each and every one of us chooses to strengthen our relationship with you day by day, Father God that we choose to have a relationship with you that can be described as a relationship in which we are holding your hand and living a life of obedience to you, Father God, trusting you full heartedly and obeying you with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, Father God. Lord, I ask that you keep each and every one of us safe and bring us back safely, Father God, to once again learn more about you and to glean truths from your word which we can work with the Holy Spirit to apply to our lives, Father. We thank you and praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching this sermon. God bless you. Watch many more. You can even binge watch. Just keep watching the sermons back to back. Gleaning the truth from the word of God and then working with the Holy Spirit to apply it to your life. God bless you. We love you and watch more sermons on the Hand in Hand with God channel. God bless you. Bye. God bless you. Go with God and no one else. Thanks for watching.